Inner Sanctum, the place where I showed you all of my tricks while I pulled them off live right in front of you. Today we're going to be continuing with this mix, the one that we got started last week, which is an electronic music track and it is being performed by the music, it's been mixed on Harrison Mixbus, a fantastic, fantastic digital audio workstation that deserves more praise than it gets. And we are doing it without the use of plugins. What kind of heresy is that, you might be wondering? Well, it's because Harrison Mixbus comes with a built-in um, console-like workflow, which means that every single channel strip has access to uh, a channel strip, actually. Every track that you create, it's gonna be a, a, a access. It's gonna have access to a channel strip, which is conformed by equalizer, compression, and saturation. And it's it's, it's coming from the beautiful Harrison Mixbus uh, system, which is an actual mixer. And uh, let me introduce you first to the guy who's gonna be controlling the controls and setting the controls for the Heart of the Sun. Here we got the Tony <laughs> <laughs> Brave, Terry Ramini. Say hello and, uh, from time to time, beautiful. Gotta be said. There we go, hello to girls and boys. Hello girls and boys, how's it going? It's a pleasure to be back, it's good to have you here as well. And yeah, I'm looking forward to see what kind of results we can achieve with this track. And actually I'm finding more and more Harrison Mix Buzz to be a very interesting mixing tool. Yes. And let's see what we get. Awesome. Yeah. So with that being said, girls and boys, let's get into it. So, as you can see, girls and boys, we got here Mar Harrison Mix Buzz. And as usual, I forget to open promos. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's a beautiful <laughs> tradition. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, traditions. And what we're going to do is we're going to be playing back the entirety of the track from the very top. Okay, girls and boys, so we can have an actual idea and remember exactly what we are going to be dealing with. And from there, I'm going to explain to you what on earth is going on. Here we go, from the top. Not bad, not bad. This is actually where we left last time we met girls and boys. And uh, I think that the mix, it's sounding quite uh, powerful when it comes to the low end. It's controlled as well. Uh, I like it, I love it, and I actually want more of it. And also, uh, I would like to remind you that if you didn't have the chance to watch uh, the, the, this previous attempt, uh, well, not this, this, the previous session, girls and boys, I remind you to go uh, back in time last week and you will be uh, able to watch the entirety of this mixing session if, uh, at the starting point, okay? Now, what are we gonna do? We're gonna be first attacking our claps because they're kinda lost in the mix. We already, as you can see here, girls and boys, worked a little bit on them. We applied a nice amount of compression here and also, we applied some uh, equalization, a fair amount of equalization, which is already uh, uh, making the making them pop a little bit. But, to be quite frank, uh, 
it's still lacking in the ways of punchiness and, and quirkiness, if, if that makes sense to you or some ways. So, we're gonna uh, begin by applying parallel compression, Tiago's favorite yeah. technique. <laughs> so, entering the Harrison Mixed Boss, mixed boss Environment, girls and boys. You summon it by clicking on, on where it says Send. Obviously. Makes sense. Totally. Makes sense. Yeah, we're gonna uh, send in. We're gonna be sending a copy of our clap to a particular mix boss. And uh, the way that my mixing setup works is the following, girls and boys. I have the first four mix bosses to control my drums, kick and bass together, guitars, background vocals, and keys. Because I usually send my vocals outside of any mix bus. Why? Because usually vocals are just one track. And then we got the next four, which are comprised by my compression, nasty, more on that later, compression for drums, and compression for snare, and compression for vocals in a parallel fashion. If you want to know more about that, let me know in the comments down below, girls and boys, because that's an entire, an entire different kind of worms. And the last array of mixed bosses are for my time-based effects. We got our, a whole reverb, a plate reverb, a box uh, for my vocals reverb, and a delay, which we are not going to be using right now. We will later. So right now we're going to be using our nasty. I'm going to turn it on just by clicking on it. And that means that this channel strip is going to be sending information to the nasty. And I'm going to control the amount of information being sent, sent by this knob. Okay. Now, if we take a look over here, that's where we got our mix bosses. So as you can see, they are actually following the exact same pattern as I described. And let's go over here to Nasty. Nasty, it's an over-the-top, super overloaded uh, um, uh, drive or, or overdrive section, or some the distortion. And it's also super over-compressed. Why? Because we're going to apply parallel compression. That's why my uh, Nasty comp is always set to Unity. So let's listen to it. I'm gonna send, I'm gonna solo my claps and we're gonna start to add little by little our nasty comp. Here we go. What do you think, Diego? Okay, I actually think that is a quite a nice result because the claps, as, it, as they are, as they come, they sound super generic. Yes. And immediately you made it feel a little bit more interesting, have a little bit more character. Of course. And more grit as well. Yes. So what we're going to do now, girls and boys, is I'm going to uh, remove the solo, which I, saw, which I already did, and we're going to start to bring up the nest, the comp compression nasty uh, uh, parallel mix boss, and we're going to start to add it to taste. Here we go with the rest of the track. Okay, we're bringing up a little bit of the sound of the um, of the, the low end. So I'm gonna now turn on my equalizer here, and I'm gonna remove a little bit of low end, a tiny bit, and then I'm gonna go and just increase the highs, uh, just just cuss. Okay, <laughs> and let's see how what we got. What do you think what happened? What do you think? Uh, as soon as I removed the, the nasty compressor, what do you think of the sound? Okay, two things were uh, popped up to my, my attention. Number one, the sound became, it went back to being generic. Yes. And second thing, super lost in the mix. Yes. There are two things that are going on right now, Gross Boys, with this. Firstly, we're increasing a little bit the gain of the, well, not the gain, the output level of the uh, claps by applying parallel compression. Why? Because we are adding an extra signal. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't be fooled uh, by the added volume. But what you say is correct. Mm. It, get it gets lost because it's less uh, edgy. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because the content, uh, the harmonic content created by this parallel bus 
allows the snare, the snare, but the claps to be uh, more readable. Okay, mm -hmm. we can actually understand it better by adding this extra oomph. Okay, of course, it, it's a little bit louder, which is a little bit clearer for us, but at the same time, it's adding extra punch. So that's important, girls and boys. Good. From there, let's see. We got something here, girls and boys. We got guitars, which are muted. Let's see what they do. Okay, that's a cool sounding guitar. <laughs> the, the delay, it's fantastic. Yeah. But it's super low ending. I'm gonna turn on my equalizer again. Tuck. And let's engage it. First, let's remove a copious amount of low end because it's ridiculous. So we're gonna turn on as well our filter here and we this is controlling the low end. Okay, girls and boys, we're gonna cut. Let's see. Let's see. That's with, without. It's barely doing anything. I'm gonna crank it up a little bit more. With. Without. Can you tell the difference? Yes. It's subtle, but it's present, right? Yeah, it is. Why am I doing that? Because I'm gonna bring them back uh, with the rest of the mix. And I want to make sure that they are not uh, clutter. They are not cluttering the low end, which is extremely important on this kind of music. So I'm going to press play again with the rest of the track, and we're going to uh, see how it first. Here we go. Okay, they are kind of uh, cloudy sounding, don't you think? This is probably because we need to remove a certain amount of uh, frequencies on the low mids. I'm gonna solo the guitar because I wanna see which frequency we're talking about. And in here we're gonna, I always mess up these guys. <laughs> now this guy is controlling, this section is controlling the gain and this is controlling the frequency, allegedly. <laughs> so we're gonna be attacking first our low mids, we're gonna be using this. And you're gonna, we're gonna do the tried and true, crank up, no, it's the other way around, <laughs> no, no, it's correct, yes, yeah, we're gonna crank up the gain and we're gonna start to uh, sweep around, trying to find the, the problematic area, here we go. Found it, found it, and by the way, thank you, Panke, for, jo for joining us, hopefully this is working on your end, it should. And uh, if you got any question, let me know, okay? So we finally, I think we found the problematic frequency. Double clicking on the gain, and that means that we are gonna set it once again to Unity. I'm gonna remove the solo, and we're gonna start to bring it up little by little, and we're gonna remove that uh, uh, frequency that is clouding everything. Here we go, from the top. Now it's working, and see how much I had to go low. The thing is that it's still kind of uh, uh, cloudy, so we're gonna now write it, uh, write it up by applying uh, highs first and then mid highs. Here we go. I'm gonna solo for you to get a, a proper idea of what I'm doing. I think that would be good. Yeah. And usually, you should never mix uh, or apply equalization solo. So since I got something that kind of works, I'm gonna set it back to Unity. I'm gonna, gonna start to add it to text. Here we go.
Good. There is something else that is still kind of annoying me. Uh, I think it's uh, the low end. Uh, I'm gonna solo again, and I'm gonna increase the gain, the the cut frequency, and I'm gonna set it up all the way up to 250. There it is. And let's see what we can do about the mid lows, the mid the mid highs. They are kind of annoying. I'm gonna bring back the rest of the mix, and we're gonna start to uh, sweep around. Here we go. Yeah, that was kind of boxy. What would you, how would you describe the sound, Diego? That frequency? Mm, don't know how to put it, but it feels a little bit... It's not even muddy, but it's... There's some... some yeah, kind a little of bit a, French. Yeah, a little bit French. Yes. Some it's nasalness to nasalness, it. Nasalness, yes. A little bit. It's not Just, actually that much, but there's some. Yeah, but it's going to make a difference once we, bring, once, once we do the comparison to the rough mix. Let's see. I'm going to press, press play again, girls and boys, and it should be better. And I'm going to turn off and on the EQ as we go, okay? So green stands for on, not green stands for not on, okay? Makes sense. <laughs> totally. So here we go. The difference is extreme, right? Yeah, it's quite big. And then actually, now that the, the 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 guitar found its place within the mix, even though it's carrying less information because we removed quite a lot as well, yes. but like it feels more present yeah. within the mix and way way cleaner. Yes, because it was quite quite muddy. Yes, yeah. muddy and cloudy. Okay. We got it, but we can. We're gonna make an extra step here, girls and boys, because let me show you. This guy is going towards our mix bus, guitar's mix bus. Okay, over here, and now we're gonna be heading towards our mix bus area, and let's find our guitar mix bus. Here it is in all its uh, mix bus glory. Now, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna apply a little bit of overdrive uh, to my signal. To make it a little bit more grittier, because remember, girls and boys, uh, distortion is great, and it's a great way to make your music pop and be more interesting sound. So I'm gonna press play again, and please pay close attention to what we're gonna get, uh, the result we're gonna get. I'm gonna solo the guitar, so I want that way you will be able to see and feel exactly the changes. I'm gonna uh, start now. Could you feel the difference? The harmonics, it was quite wa way too palpable, especially when the release tail of the reverb started to fade out, I think. If I'm being honest, I was paying attention to a couple of comments no here problem. and I wasn't paying close attention no to, problem, to but the I, that's, that's the reason why I actually address it without uh, waiting for you to say something. <laughs> <laughs> Good. So I'm gonna uh, play back again the track, but I'm gonna uh, now do it with the rest of the mix. And we're going to start to crank up the tape saturation. And I think that uh, even going a little bit not naughtier will be a good idea. Here we go. It worked. It worked 100%. Now let's apply some compression, okay? Because I feel like uh, my compression, uh, my guitar could be uh, quite enhanced by applying some compression. The question is this: if we are comp if we compress a signal that is extremely wet in delay and reverb, we're going to increase the volume of those uh, of the tail and and the repetitions as well. Yeah, we gotta be intelligent, girls and boys. And I like to preserve the attack of the guitar because that actually allows the guitar to cut through. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use this uh, this leveler uh, compression mode, which uh, has access, uh, give me access to an attack uh, knob. Why am I telling you this? Because look what happens if I set it to compressor. 
Now it's just ratio. Mm -hmm. And if I go to limiter, it's just the, 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 the release tail. So that's not what we want. We want the leveler, which allows me to control the attack. Because we're going to work with the slow attack. Okay? That means that the hit is going to come in, it's gonna, the transient is going to go through it, and then the compression is going to begin a few milliseconds after this transient attack. Oh, okay, cool. That way we're going to uh, uh, make it a little bit more smoother, the transition, okay? And keep the, and we're going to bring up a little bit more of the release tail. Let's do it. And we're going to be controlling with, with this. When it comes to uh, compression, I recommend you to do it first uh, solo. That way you uh, are not uh, uh, getting in the way of the rest of this of the stuff. Okay, well, sorry. You are actually able to detect and see the difference that you're actually doing uh, on your sound by applying the compression. Okay, here we go. This is interesting, girls and boys, because we're sending a really, really, really low signal into our mix, uh, into our mix bus. So I'm gonna uh, increase the gain of our mix bus here, uh, a good chunk, and that means that our output is gonna be louder. Let's see. Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm gonna then lower the output of our uh, mix bus. I'm gonna press play so I I can uh, bring back the guitars and set it where they were. There they are. Once again, we're going to solo the guitars and then we're going to start to play compression. Here we go. Good. Extremely subtle change. Could you tell the difference? Yeah, to me it felt like the, the, the bouncing effect of the delay was way more present, way yes. more palpable. And also the, the attack is enhanced, right? Yeah. It feels a little bit more aggressive and a little bit more punchier. And let's see what happens when we bring back the rest of the mix. Now the question is this, Gerson Boys, should I bring uh, the guitars a little bit uh, louder, turn them a little bit louder? What do you think, Theo? Can you play a tiny bit more again? Yes. What do you reckon? To be honest, to me, I, I like where, where they're sitting in the mix right now, because mm -hmm. the guitars are not a driving force in this track. No. No, they're yeah. just uh, an, an accent. The yeah. thing is that, as such, uh, they should pop whenever they are part of it. Mm. So they, that's the question. Should I bring them up or no? I'm going to give it a test and see if we can go louder without ruining the, the arrangement. Here we go. Much better, don't you think? Yeah, I actually do do agree that yes. you got a better result there. Yeah, but I not only increase the volume. Let me let me, let me explain what happened. Mm. I actually first increased the volume a little bit, but then I realized wait a second. I was compressing way too fast. Okay. I realized that by uh, my beautiful meter here, and I just increased the milliseconds. I made the attack of my compressor slower. That way. The entirety of the chord got through the compression circuit without being compressed, and then the compressor the compressor kicked in and enhanced and br brought up the release tail, mm -hmm. but making it steady rather than just a. a, a it, it's still fading out. Okay, don't yeah, yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong, Carlos, but it feels more solid. Okay. Okay. And that gives the feel that the attack that the attack of the guitar was enhanced. Of course, once I once I control that. I started to bring up the guitar a little bit louder, a little bit louder until it sits where it should. Mm -hmm. So we got a nice and much better result. 
Now, let's see what else uh, we, have, uh, we haven't worked on, and it's obvious what. Let's hit the arpeggiators. I'm gonna uh, solo my arpeggiator number one to, with, to have an idea of what kind of stuff we're dealing with. What a cool sound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and if you weren't there, actually you can be part of the production of this track because we actually also live stream it live, Girls and Boys. And I, uh, that synthesizer was uh, created with this guy over here, Girls and Boys, uh, Nathal Juno 2 from the 80s. And you won't believe it, but I was controlling it with my computer. Yes, through the incredibly advanced technology known as MIDI. So you should definitely check that out. And also I was using a, a guitar pedal to get that uh, delay, uh, which is fantastic. I like it quite a lot. Yep. Now let's listen to the second the second arpeggiator, because if you were there when we recorded this track, you know which and what kind of sound we're going to get. It's the exact same sound, girls and boys, but uh, on a lower, uh, in a lower octave, octave and also dry no uh, effect on it why because it would be a mess <laughs> okay <laughs> so let's analyze first our first equalizer because this is actually fun we got a sweep there is a section on which uh, the arpeggiator starts to come in and uh, come in but it's uh, the filter is engaged so I don't think that that would be a good reference point let's go to main again over here in our this is our actual um, uh, transport bar okay and for those of you who are thinking, where on earth can I see my waveforms? Here, there is your regular run of the mill, uh, kind of hideous looking uh, digital workstation environment, okay? <laughs> but we are here for mixing. So, let's see. Let's analyze the, the path, the, the arpeggiator. Okay, we already got what we have to do. We're gonna remove all of low end but not as harsh as I did. Let's uh, do, let's analyze the track again and let's try to find where to where to put our cut. I think that would be a good starting point, girls and boys, because even though uh, this is not the base, there is some low frequency energy uh, happening here, which is important. So let's give it a try now with the rest of the mix. Tiago, can you explain to the girls and boys what happened? Look, actually, even before you started EQing, I had it in my head that the sense the, the, the arpeggiator was sounding maybe a, a little bit too dark. Mm. And I had it in my head that you that you saw that you would be tackling the highs. Yes. But actually, by just cutting a little bit of the lows, the, the, the unnecessary low frequencies, you actually already achieved the result that I, that I was uh, expecting of it. Yes. It's sounding clearer, and it, you got... Uh, um, got out some of the dark factor, but not the good dark factor. Mm -hmm. That was a yes. little bit too much. It was kind of mo moody, right? Yeah. Moody. Okay, but do you know why? Mm. No, no problem. Why? The reason why Thiago uh, described the sound this way is because we were getting uh, some, a ridiculous, a copious amount of low end energy uh, being summed, coming from every single instrument. Or not only the bass guitar or the or the synthesizer playing the bass notes or, or the kick drum are the ones who are generating low end energy. Basically, well, most of the instruments recorded live are gonna have some form of rumble. That's how we call it, girls and boys. And it's it low end it's a buildup of low end energy, which might be coming from some reverberation taking place in the room where the recording took place, the AC, um, what else? Even the microphone itself capturing uh, sound waves coming from, from the sun. And uh, all of those uh, starts to add up. Now you might be wondering, this is a, this is a, a synthesizer, an analog synthesizer recorded directly into, into a mixer and desk. Yes, it is. So how, how, how on earth are we getting those, those notes? Well, girls and boys, the thing is that given the, the timbre and the note being played by the synthesizer, it's kind of in the mid-lows. 
Mm. So that creates uh, subharmonics. Okay. And sub, 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 well, using a non proper term, subdivisions of sound, okay, groups and voice. And it cre it, those are the ones that are adding that clutter. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's why every mixing console comes with a filter. Even the cheapest uh, of the Behringer uh, <laughs> mixing desk that you can get on each channel strip, at least you're going to get a filter, a low cut and a high cut, because those are extremely useful. And look, I didn't touch any form of highs, as Tiago said, and we already got a much cleaner sound. Yeah, so because it feels brighter, even feels though you brighter. didn't enhance yes. the, the highs, it feels brighter. Yeah, exactly, because we removed some of the uh, extra energy. And yeah. why we got this result? It's because by those frequencies in mind that you got your, your stereo bus, okay? And that stereo bus has a certain size, and you're starting to cram it up with energy, its frequency, mm. everything's summed. At the by the end, at the end by uh, on, on the mix bus, okay, the some the, the stereo bus, and every frequency is trying to get out uh, through that tiny door that it's the stereo bus, and the stuff that doesn't belong, it's also trying to get out, and it's cluttering and it's stopping the rest of the good stuff to get out freely, okay. Okay. So by removing the stuff that you don't need, you let the good stuff to get out and to become audible. Does that make sense to you? It does. Perfect, because that's kind of a difficult analogy. <laughs> but <laughs> let's continue, because I've been speaking for way too long. Now, let's take a look at the second arpeggiator sound. This is obviously lower in uh, in, register. In, in, in register. So what we're going to do, thank you, Theo, for uh, helping me with my speech. We're going to do the same. This is going to be difficult for some boys because this guy it's playing low notes that are almost bass notes let's bring back the clap the, the kick and the bass and let's see what happens Okay, I think this works, Gross and Boys. And we couldn't go that low. I think we are like, let me see, 4, 47 hertz, allegedly. And uh, we're gonna have to fix it by hitting here, our mid lows, because there is some form of nasal sound coming out. Okay, and that's the biggest cluttering uh, happening. So let's uh, do it again, and we're gonna look for our problematic frequency. Here we go. As usual, we're going to crank up and we're going to sweep around. And my guesstimate is going to be somewhere around here. But we will see. Yeah, it was there. <laughs> That's good. So I'm going to press play again, but with the rest of the instruments. So that way we can actually assess if we uh, correctly, okay? Let's press play, here we go. Tiago, could you tell it, can you tell the difference? Yes. The kick drum. Yeah, it pops. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Why? Because coming back to the analogy of people trying to get out of the building, uh, by removing that layer of fat uh, on the arpeggiator, we actually made the sound of our kick punchier, clearer, and all around better. Because it's if it, and this is something quite quite important, Gerson. It's something that took years for me to understand and get my head around it. We wrongly believe that uh, if we want to fix an instrument, uh, let's say the kick drum, we gotta work on the kick drum. No, we gotta work on everything that pertains that frequency range, and 
It took me years for actually understand that, okay, if I want to get a proper sound in kick drum, I also have to make sure that my bass is working in tandem with such kick drum. Mm -hmm. And in this case, it's also the arpeggiator that is playing the low end. And the pads and everything. And, the <laughs> and everything, yeah. yeah. That's why we call this mixing or some voice, because, and equalize, equalizers. Because what you do is equalize the sound between the sources. It's not there to make, it's not pixie dust or something. Well, some of the equalizers actually have some. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, talking about you, uh, so. <laughs> but, um, okay, hopefully that makes sense to you, guys, because this, this was a great improvement. Now, this will allow us to work on our first arpeggiator, which is the main. It's actually the, the lead voice in this, bo in this song. So, let's tackle it. I will have to roll off my slips or something. It's time to get nasty. Here we go. Okay, we got the same situation here with a little bit of build up of low end on the mid range, but it's not as dramatic and as obnoxious as the other guy. Obviously, the register in this guy is totally different. Let's see the, the usual tried and true and guesstimate wise, I think it's only somewhere around here 400 something, but I might be wrong. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, not that wrong. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's see. I'm gonna pull it back and we're gonna remove that frequency range. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, feels way cleaner. And look at how little I removed. Yeah. Basically nothing. Barely touched it. Yes. But just by removing that frequency that was cramming everybody's style, we uncramped it. <laughs> okay. And now we, of course, got a, 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 a drop in volume. That's why we're going to track tackle our trim. We're going to increase it a tiny bit. The same way as we did with our guitars on the, on the mix bus, we are going to do it as well on our, on our uh, equalizer because it's a way to compensate. Okay. Let's see. Like it, like it. Now let's see. I still feel that there is something off uh, on my arpeggiator, which will mm, uh, it's, it's stopping it from being. Uh, oh, let me put it this way. I like it, but I'm not loving it, and we have to love it. So let's see. Okay, this is gonna be tricky for some boys because uh, we got something annoying, but it's happening quite here. The problem is that that frequency range, this section, or some boys, this 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 quadrant of our equalizer, it's also where the fundamental frequencies, what makes the sound sound like, it sounds like, uh, live. We have to be quite careful. Don't know exactly where to put my my cut, so probably by listening to the entirety of the mix and guesstimate wise somewhere around here or somewhere. And it's going to be again a little, basically no uh, 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 move applied to my gain, okay? In, in terms of reduction. Here we go. Okay, Thiago, we were actually discussing while we were playing the back, the, playing back the track. Yeah. Could you get the difference? Look, I got it as super subtle, to be honest. Yes. I had to make an effort to actually be able to hear it. I can't define it 100% what's the difference. Yes. It feels a tiny, it pops a tiny bit more. That's the point. Yeah. That's the entire of the I wouldn't be able to pinpoint, okay, it's because of that, but it, no. it feels a little bit more fleshed out. Yes, exactly. And here's the deal with some movies. When mixing, uh, when you when your tricks are obvious, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> because the idea is to make uh, an actual 
uh, emotional impact on on the audience rather than making wow them by impressing them with the incredible effect that you pull off. The effect has no reason to exist if it's devoid of any meaning. How profound is that? That was that was beautiful. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I nearly shed a tear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let's now make the attack of our uh, uh, what's the name of this? Our uh, RPG harder and more noticeable. We're gonna do it by working with our high fre high frequencies, but we're gonna turn it into a picking rather than a shelf. That way we can actually attack just one particular frequency without increasing the rest. Let's see what we can do. Again, I'm going to solo the sound of my uh, arpeggiator and let's see what happens. I kind of like that. Let's see what uh, how it fares with the rest of the mix. And pay close attention to this Geiger sound, okay? Because I'm gonna be increasing it little by little. And actually, in this one, it's gonna be a quite, a quite noticeable difference. Could you see the difference? Uh at the moment, I wasn't presently paying attention to the sound. I was dealing with that situation over here. Okay, <laughs> no problem. I'm gonna play it back again. First without, and then I'm gonna bring it back. And you, you know, Rain stands for with. What do you think? Okay, now that I was actually uh, paying, paying attention. attention. <laughs> Look, no, the difference is actually quite big. Good. It's not, not as subtle as the last time around. Yes. It feels more present, it feels cleaner, and you it's cutting through. Yes. As it wasn't through. before. It's cutting, cutting through. through. Exactly. Now let's tackle our mix bus the, uh, that is controlling the keyboards and background vocals and thank god that we don't have background vocals because i'm gonna be a little bit aggressive with the with this guy we're gonna go over here girls and boys and here it is i'm gonna position it so it's not uh, that oh, horribly on the right side it's here we're gonna engage first our traditional uh, just uh, cranking up the, the the drive knob of course not but we're gonna start to add it up little by little and I'm, I will apply some compression, but we're going to set it in a different fashion. We're going to work with the, yeah, the compressor setting, okay? Here we go. Okay, I did many things. Let me play it back and then I'm gonna address everything. Okay, here we go. Okay, 
where to begin? Well, from the top, obviously. <laughs> Let me explain. First, you saw me messing around with this little knob girl symbols, and it was obvious the difference. We started to get a more aggressive sounding um, arpeggiated sound without turning it, it, turning it into heavy metal. Also, I messed around with my compression and remember girls and boys in here we're sending everything that you see here girls and boys that it's uh, that it's it, that has a purple led light okay on and this means that we're actually controlling our path our peer one our peer two and i think there is a, a, an extra array of instruments yeah the vocals that we haven't attached uh, attacked yet and even some special special effects as well that's good because we're going to be already uh, kind of uh, compressing those guys and applying a little bit of uh, EQ and uh, a distortion. Uh, speaking of the EQ, I added a tiny bit of shine. This is uh, frequency, 2000 Hz, but applied to everything uh, under the sun, okay? <laughs> Which is good. And it's working. I am quite happy with the results. And I don't know if you got the difference, Diego. Um, no, not really. Let me play it back, but this is going to be the moment in which we're going to bring our trusty adapter AV. And we're going to make a comparison point. Uh, with, well, we're going to use the previous track, the first, uh, the rough mix out of the project on which I recorded this track. Uh, it's a rough mix, which stands with just a, a quick balance of volume, and uh, you will find something funny happening. Okay, for, here we go. And for those of you who are not familiar with this guy, this means the mix that we're working on this means orange that we're listening to the reference track okay here we go i'm gonna try to match it uh, volume wise here we go Okay, how can you describe this, Thiago? <laughs> nah, the difference is stupid, but you can't even uh, compare because on the, um, the mixed version, yes. everything pops. Yeah. You can distinguish the different ele elements of the mix, not as if they are working in separately. No, they're working together, but you can actually uh, feel them independently. Yes. To a degree. Like separated between each other. Yeah, and in the, in the raw version, everything is kind of a mashed together yes I kind of masqueraded right? <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes and that's happening because with that mix it's uh it's not working in tandem with each other every instrument is just going full on without uh, showing total disregard for whatever uh, their partner is doing and that's an awful thing to do that's why it mixes tends to suck and this is actually how we can gonna we're gonna put an end to this uh, broadcast version because this is actually that was my point. I wanted you to see the difference. So we're gonna do a final uh, listen from the top, and I'm gonna be comparing it, okay? Because uh, as a reminder, what we did today was this. I will have to go bigger because it's important. We applied distortion uh, to our uh, snare, okay? Well, we're our claps to make them pop and cut through the mix uh, much better. Then we clean up plenty of uh, uh, of the sound coming out of our arpeggiated uh, synthesizers, which are the source of the, well, which are the main melody uh, or the main driving force behind the track. And we also uh, made sure that our guitars fit in. We applied compression, we applied distortion, we applied equalization, and everything without the need of extra plugins, girls and boys. That's the power of Harrison Mixbus. And you can actually replicate my, my workflow by downloading the free template that I got for you. You can actually download it. I, I attached the link to the first comment on the live chat, and then I'm gonna attach that link to the first comment on the comment section for those of you who are watching uh, in the future. So. Let's listen to the entire to the track and let's have some fun by uh, just uh, cringing a little bit when listening to the original. Here we go from the top.
You may have noticed that there are still some elements on the rough mix that are not present in this mix, Crossamores. Why is that? Because we first have to tackle the foundation, the first and most important tracks. We're talking about the rhythmic section, which is our bass and kick drum, and well, it's not in this case our 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 uh, clap, and also make sure that our uh, foundation, which is also uh, the harmonic foundation, I'm, I'm talking about the pads and the arpeggiated uh, tracks, are uh, working properly. Next week, we're going to bring up the rest of the instruments, girls and boys, because there are plenty of special effects, vocals and stuff that are quite cool and which are not present in this version of the mix. But I'm telling you this because it, this is a progressive and constant uh, in develop uh, process. It's not something that you just set it up, uh, get it running and you are going to be done with it. No, you have to do it uh, following a methodology and that methodology has to come out of your attack plan. It's not just, uh, yeah, I will have to do the same thing on every mix. That will be the biggest mistake that you can commit. What you should do is always analyze the music that you are going to be working on. And even before you start to uh, bring channels and faders uh, up. For Just for the record, we spent the last uh, 30 to 40 minutes listening to trans music. Just because I wanted to get my ears uh, tuned to the kind of music that we're going to be working on. Uh, that allows me, and this is a really important tip that I like to uh, give to you, girls and boys, that allows me to uh, set a target in my head to know exactly what kind of sound I should be looking for. Because by, comp by getting used to the sound of a professional mix from someone else, I can actually uh, set a, a starting point. And everything that I hear here I, is gonna is gonna be compared in my head to the music that I was listening to before uh, tackling the track. Does that make sense to you, Theo? It does. It actually feels like a good practice, just so you can have a little bit of reference on yes. what kind what kind of sound you you wish to achieve and how to get there. Yes, and that allows you to come up with a plan. So, girls and boys, if this was uh, of any use for you, let, let us know in the comment section down below. And if you got any question, let me know as well. I will be more than happy to answer because, yeah, I know that we have been slacking on the ways of answering to some of you or some of that. Uh, you won't believe how, how big of a train wreck these last few weeks have been. But we are finally up and running and we're going to be able to uh, to attend as much of those, as the, uh, of those comments uh, as quickly as possible. Again, just a quick reminder, you can download this very uh, mixing uh, uh, template for free. Just make sure that you click on the link below. Okay, so as every single time that we meet you with some boys, First and foremost, I gotta remind you that if you want to support the channel, not only by subscribing would be awesome, but also by following us on social media, such as Instagram, because that's the best way for you to get in touch with us in a much more personal basis, and also to see from time to time the studio docs that are awesome. They're one of the biggest assets that we got here <laughs> uh, as, a, as a music production facility. And also, you can also listen to our music on Apple Music or Spotify, and, well, as every single time I meet you or some boys, the only thing that is left is reminding you that never, ever, ever let anybody tell you what to dream about. And remember that we will see you when we see you.